the opening bell, and Alex, uh, give us a hint what we might look for here in strategy. Well, Mike McCallum, the champion on the left, traditionally a slow starter. Steve Collins has always been, in his 16 fights, a very fast starter. McCallum relies on his left side mainly. His nickname, of course, the Body Snatcher. Perhaps the best, the man with a reputation as being the best body puncher in boxing today. And that's even more significant here because Steve Collins on the right has only been down once in his 16 fight pro career, but that was from a body punch. Both these men like to counter punch. It'd be interesting to see who takes the lead. The crowd reacting to a left by Collins that really just flicked the jaw of McCallum. Really, it was not a blow that did any damage at all, but the crowd's going to react to anything Irish Steve Collins does here today. And you saw at the end of that exchange, it looked like McCallum landed some telling blows. Collins wobbled a little bit, looked down as though he slipped on something. Steve Collins not moving quite as much as I might have expected him to. He can move effectively both ways, side to side. There, the right hand of the body by McCallum. Right hand the left of the body by McCallum. And as Alex said, a very patient, a very cautious, slow starting fighter. But the body snatcher and a good left that time by McCallum. If he has his druthers, he'll work below the shoulders. Very confident that it'll take effect in round seven and beyond and, and bring him the victory. Steve Collins admitted to us yesterday that he's got to use his jab, keep McCallum away from busting up his body. Right away, you saw Steve Collins touch his right eye, complain a little bit about a possible use of the head by McCallum. Stevie Collins has busted up in quite a few of his fights, but he says he just doesn't let it affect him. He's got tremendous confidence in his corner and a cut, mu cut man there, Goody Petronelli. Same corner, of course, Goody and Pat Petronelli that handled marvelous Marvin Hagler. Another uh, middleweight of note from the Boston area. <laughs> there, Jim in Brockton, Massachusetts, and of course, talk to Steve Collins about it. He's he makes no bones about it. He's in awe of working under the same roof and for the same people as did marvelous Marvin Hagler. Both fighters wearing black trunks. Collins going with the white trim. First time he's ever worn black. Normally wears Dublin blue or white, but notice the shamrock, nonetheless, on the left side. Coming up to 20 seconds left in round one, Dan, I'm surprised Collins has been hit with these many solid punches by the champion. It, he may just be intimidated here uh, by, the, by the occasion, by his first title shot, because he's just standing there and taking unnecessary punishment, and that's not the way he fights normally. Well, he believes in his strong chin as we come to the final seconds of round one. We'll see if it holds up. Here's and we await the bell for the beginning of the second round. There's a delay in the bell. Looking over in the McCallum corner, McCallum sitting on uh, his stool. I don't know what they're waiting for. That was a long, long minute, more like a minute 10. Well, that was a good minute 10, minute 20 even, between rounds one and two. We said it's the first championship fight in Boston in nine years. Obviously, everybody's under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> a rusty yeah. bell ringer, is that what you're trying to say? Not ready for the championship level. A good first round for Mike McCallum, though. The traditional chant of all fights you hear in England is a soccer chant. Here we go. A good flurry there by both fighters. Neither one of them landing a telling blow. This is one case where they better not inspire Steve Collins too much. And his game is not brawling. He started out fighting that way as a young pro, but his game is movement. And he's not going to get it done going toe to toe with Mike McCallum. There is Gemma Collins, the wife of Steve, who is very much pregnant. She's expecting a baby the second week of March. They already have one daughter. And nonetheless, she's at ringside rooting her husband on. There's Collins tying up McCallum on the inside, not letting Mike get off those body punches. One thing to watch for here, well, a couple of things, Dan. First of all, does Collins respect McCallum's reputation as a body puncher so much that he carries his, his hands down to protect his body and thereby gives up the chin, number one. Number two, watch McCallum's legs. Generally, if a fighter goes, 
he's going to go in the legs first. So far, McCallum has to, hasn't had to do much cutting off of the ring because Collins really hasn't moved as much as we thought he would. Well, you'll notice McCallum doesn't counter with a shot to the head. More often than not, he counters with a shot to the ribs. And a moment ago, you can see how he really made the knees of Steve Collins quiver a little bit with one of those solid shots inside. He did not earn that reputation and the nickname the body snatcher by being a, a kill shot artist. Yeah. He wins the war of attrition more often than not. More of it. 31 KOs, Alex, but very few of them have been with lightning bolts. Yeah, actually, the only the big one-shot knockout. Ooh, good right uppercut inside by McCallum. That is a punch that he loves to use. Right hand counter uppercut. And in this exchange, it's the champion, Mike McCallum. Yeah, the crowd's getting, getting the better of it. The crowd's getting excited, but uh, those are not good exchanges for Steve Collins. Oh, and a good jab that time by Mike McCallum. Got between the gloves of Irish Steve Collins. This is action in the second round as we close it out. Oh, and a good left hook that time by Steve Collins. McCallum responded with one of his own. Spirited action here at the end of the second round. Let's go. Let's get that. Another good round there in round number two for Mike McCallum, who first won the junior middleweight title back in 1984. Successfully defended it a half a dozen times before moving up and attempting to get the middleweight crown. He lost to Sumbu Kalambe, his only blemish on his otherwise stellar career, 36 and one, his record. And Alex, uh, he's taking Collins and the crowd almost as if they're not here. Mike McCallum definitely fighting his fight. Total professional. In the Collins corner in between rounds, Goody Petronelli said, that's only two rounds, Stevie, but you've got to box him. You have to box him. And right here you see a little bit more movement from Collins, but no effective offense. Not able to generate any punches off of that movement. Because of McCallum's work to the body, a number of his, of his shots will stray below the belt. Throughout his career, he's been warned and penalized even for low blows. There is bottom, Collette Steve. Collins. Steve's mother is... His Keep entire on, family Steven. is here at ringside. You break his heart, Steve. This fight was originally slated to be held in Dublin and then was moved to Boston when an arena fell through in Dublin. Didn't physically fall through, but the promotion didn't take place. Good work by Collins. Some good body shots fighting off the ropes. And there, a good jab from Stevie Collins. Has to get that punch into his repertoire here. That left by McCallum actually hit the gloves. None of those blows are doing anything at all. That inside right clipped him a little bit. Stevie didn't tie him up effectively on the inside there. He took a couple of scoring punches that he didn't have to. Very, very tough when you just don't have a powerful punch. Steve Collins, I mean, cynics would say Stevie Collins can't break an egg. Only six uh, knockouts and his 16 wins. It's very, very difficult when you have that much of a disadvantage in power. You have to find some way to make up for it. And uh, what he's got to do is use the left, make it a sharp punch. Here, yeah, a good right-hand counter. But again, look how it was countered by McCallum back to the body. Alex, if you were 25 fighting a man 33, wouldn't you think that the longer this fight went on, that youth would serve you and that it would swing more to your advantage? Well, I'd try to make him move. I mean, I'd try to find out how his legs were. I, you know, make him chase me, make him cut the ring off. Uh, it so happens that you brought up a word about Mike McCallum in the first round that's very true very patient because he does use the body punching to wear down. Oh, and a good left there by Collins. You saw it snap the head of Mike McCallum. McCallum missing a lot there on the inside. That snapping jab of McCallum doesn't appear to have a whole lot on it. More of a pawing jab a lot of the times. Oh, and there's a good left counter. Closing seconds of round number three. We're scheduled for 12. Well, the bell keeper a little more in tune to what's happening here as we get started here in round number four. Boy, and this opens right up with both fighters going inside. Mike McCallum. The champion in control. His mother, Olive, watches. His mother and father are both here. There is his father, Donald, at ringside as well. So the McCallums and the Collins get it on in Boston. 
Mike McCallum speaks about when he was 10 years old, sitting with his father on the radio in Kingston, Jamaica, listening to the great fights from the United States and dreaming about being a fighter one day. Well, he is that. That left from Collins hit the glove of McCallum more than anything else. Oh, and a good right to the body by Mike McCallum. Again, loves to counter inside, down low. Bursting into song, and Alex, this fight might as well be in double. <laughs> Steve Collins actually said that there's a great deal less pressure put on me by having the fight here in Boston rather than double. I would have felt much too much pressure in Boston. We'd like to remind our local ABC stations that at the end of this round, we're going to be taking a station break. Yeah, he said he'd feel much too much pressure had he been in Dublin with all his countrymen uh, making tremendous demands pre-fight. The fact of the matter is, I think that he is feeling the pressure now once the bell rang. I mean, the impact of what it means to be in a world championship fight has got him a little bit off of what he does best. And, and Mike McCallum has something to do with it, too. It's a giant leap up for Steve Collins in only his 17th professional fight, strapping on someone with the talents of Mike McCallum, whether he's 33 or not. You saw Collins do something there that Ordinarily, you'd say it was a good tactic against an aging champion. Try to back him up. Maybe he doesn't have the legs to fight backing up. But that isn't Stevie. Oh, Stevie Look Collins cut, cut over the left eye. Look at the cut, and it is a bad cut, bleeding profusely over the left eye of Steve Collins. He paws at it there with his right. Oh, oh and McCallum goes right after it with the right lead and hits it. We said earlier, Steve Collins says, the cuts don't bother me. I have tremendous confidence. I've been cut before. When he first defended his United States Boxing Association title, he was cut over both eyes and his ear. Well, you can see Mike McCallum here, Alex. I mean, he's got radar lock on that cut. He goes right for the left eye of Collins. ABC's Wide World of Sports featuring the WBA World Middleweight Championship is going to continue after this word from your local ABC station. and Tony Petronelli working on the cut. You saw the stool come into the ring, and Bernie Soto, the referee, got it back out. But a busy 60 seconds in the Collins corner, Alex. That's an embarrassing moment for a veteran cornerman like Goody Petronelli leaving the corner in. He had a lot of work to do on the eye and forgot the stool. I, I shouldn't blame Goody. It might not be his responsibility. Well, if it isn't, you'll, you'll hear about it. <laughs> cut uh, bleeding a little bit right away. Now Stevie Collins has to take this round, get on his bicycle, and allow that. So referee Soto there warned both men about watching their heads. You can be sure that Stevie Collins is watching his. An effective job, at least up to now, by the Petronellis. You can see the cut not bleeding much at all. It, it has to have time. The coagulant that Goody put in the eye has to have time to take effect. Keep in mind, though, the cut is over the eye, so the chances of it being a problem. And look at this exchange by Mike McCallum. A half a dozen scoring blows to the head of Steve Collins. I mean, Mike, Stevie Collins had enough problems just beating Mike McCallum without this cut. Well, Mike McCallum having target practice on the head of Steve Collins. And Collins wisely clinches. The gloves are down. Look at Collins. He's carrying his gloves lower. If anything with a cut, you'd think he'd keep them up high. Oh, but it's target practice for the champion now. That time McCallum just lined him up, pawed him with his left glove, and drilled him with his right. And right Collins, a dramatic difference, wouldn't you say, Alex? He looks, well, he does not so much tired. He just looks zapped. He just has no answers right now. Mike McCallum is posing questions, and that cut is posing questions, and Stevie Collins has no answers. Sometime, sometime later, I'll tell you what the difference is between tired and sound. I don't, I don't really know. There is Mike McCallum's daughter, Michelle. Mike's wife, Yvonne, died after open heart surgery back in 1984. He is a single father. Very, very proud of his nine-year-old daughter. 
But she's proud of her daddy, yeah, too. She should be. He is putting on a very, very professional display against Steve Collins. The cut over Collins' eye isn't bleeding so much, but right now that's not his major problem. And how's he gonna, he couldn't generate any offense when he didn't have a cut. How's he gonna get it together to put the cut without power? I mean, that's the key thing. He just doesn't have a punch. If he, if he had enough power to sit in there and wing hard punches, you give him a chance, but right now you just can't see any. The VA Middleweight Championship scheduled for 12 rounds. I'm Dan Deardorff along with Alex Swallow. We are at the Heinz Convention Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Mike McCallum, the champion against Steve Collins, the challenger, and it has been all Mike McCallum up to now, Alex. A cut over the left eye of Steve Collins that he got in the fourth round hasn't really been a factor, but he took a beating in the fifth round. Mike McCallum was all over it. I don't think this fight's ever gonna go to a decision, but that might've been a two-point round. It was close, you're right. If somebody scores at a 10-8 round, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, again, the right hand by McCallum. He's taking advantage of well, Collins' we've, left eye. We've heard a whole bunch of talk about the toughness and the chin of Steve Collins. Unfortunately, he may get a chance to display it here this afternoon. Mike McCallum reacting as if that was a low blow by Collins. Collins coming in with that left down low and really leaving himself open, Alex. McCallum's going to climb that low left with a right and score with it. Seems to me like Mike McCallum's taking a round off here. He put forth a lot of energy in that last round trying to take Collins out. And Stevie Collins, if he can summon up uh, a little bit of energy right now, I think he could uh, just to temporarily at least get himself back into this fight. Again, a reminder, this is a very pro-Collins crowd here in Boston. Do not be misled. <laughs> yeah, do not react every time the crowd does. They're, they're grasping at straws right now. For their oh, and a good right by Collins. That, they have reason to cheer. That was a good right to the chin of McCallum. Yeah, now, this is Collins' best round. I mean, uh, and I think, as I say, it's because McCallum just uh, was not able to sustain what he put forth last round. We talked about the Petronelli's in Collins' corner. There's Eddie Futch, one of the most respected trainers in all of boxing. He's the trainer and corner man for the champion, Mike McCallum. But again, this crowd reacting a lot more than they should be. Eddie Futch, 79 years old, really uh, one of the great men in this sport. You look at him now, you can't believe he won sport in Detroit with Joe Lewis. Looks awful good. Mike McCallum telling hey. us yesterday, Alex, that uh, Eddie Futch makes him box more in training than he ever has before. <laughs> Collins' punches right now don't appear to have a lot on him. No, but McCallum is tired. Whether this is just temporary or it's uh, a downhill slide, we'll see. But he definitely is tired right now. It's more and, and Collins me. coming in with his head. He's trying to even it up. Both fighters looking weary. We're at halfway mark if it goes a distance. Both fighters hit their stools heavily. Mike McCallum up first. Getting ready here for the beginning of the seventh round for the WBA Middleweight Championship. Now let's find out whether that was just a temporary comeback there by Steve Collins or whether he can sustain the pressure he put on in round six. The first round I gave him in the fight, Dan. But as Alex, for the first time, Steve Collins has to think that maybe I got a shot to win this thing. Now, now he's backing up uh, Mike McCallum, and Mike McCallum can be a deadly counterpuncher. Alex, your synopsis of the first six rounds we saw. Well, as I say, McCallum, I thought, won the first five, maybe five of 10 eight. Collins cut over the left eye in round four. Seemed to bother him an awful lot in the, in, in the fifth round, but he came back to win the sixth. He has to keep the momentum going his way. Don't forget that later on today in ABC's Wide World of Sports, we'll have the George Foreman Jerry Cooney fight up a couple of weeks ago in Atlantic City, plus Willie Shoemaker's final race later on in ABC's Wide World of Sports as the shoe climbs the board. Catchy ground ball. Mike McCallum scoring with some counters as Steve Collins leading with his head and his chin. 
And overthrowing a bit, Alex, and that's going to get him in trouble. A good right from Collins, though, caught the chin of McCallum. Both fighters are looking arm weary, but McCallum may be looking more so. More movement than we're used to seeing from Mike McCallum. Eddie Butts told him in the corner. Get on your butt, not get on your bicycle, move and counter punch. And he's tried to do that this round. But he is tired, as is Collins. Both fighters' families, as we told you at ringside, here's Colette Collins. The challenger's mother, and she has not been on her seat since this fight started. Up again. <laughs> oh, a wild left that time by Collins, and he laughs at himself. Both men really take. Oh, oh a good right. A good right by Collins. You saw the head of a Callum snap back. Got an interesting game. It really has. I mean, I think, still think you have to make McCallum a big favorite, but he's got a crisis of his own right now. Collins seems to have dealt with his crisis and come through it okay for the time being, but Mike McCallum is, is definitely not dominating the world through the first five rounds. We're coming to the end of the seventh round. Steve Collins told us yesterday, I just feel the longer this goes on, the more in command I'll become. That's come to pass the last two rounds. We're waiting the bell for the beginning of the eighth round. We're in Boston, Massachusetts. Mike McCallum, the black man in the black trucks. Steve Collins, the white man in the black trucks, the challenger. Mike McCallum owned the first five or six rounds of this fight, but Steve Collins has made a resurgence in the last two. And he is oh, a good back. low shot to the stomach by Collins. No warning from the referee. McCallum is backing up, and, and whether at age 33 he can back up like he is, we'll wait and see. Trying to gather himself, wait for a second win. And one of the things here, Alex, that has really helped Steve Collins was the work by Goody Petronelli in closing that cut over the left eye that he sustained in the fourth round. It has not been effective. I want to emphasize, this is not really natural to Steve Collins coming forward like this. He has been a moving counterpuncher who fights in flurries but does not like the role of steady aggressor. But he has been that way the last two rounds and into this one. There is Roddy Collins and Steve Collins' brother. Both families here today well represented. The McCallums and the Collins. They all ought to be proud of their sons and brothers here today. We want to remind our local ABC stations that at the end of this round, we'll once again be taking a station break. Action here in the eighth round. Tired. They're both breathing heavily from their mouths. Oh, and that was a good right by McCallum. Again, the clash of heads. Fighters are landing punches, but they don't appear to have a whole lot behind them. ABC's Why World of Sports, featuring the WBA World Middleweight Championship, will continue after this word from your local ABC station.
There is the bell. This is the beginning of the ninth round. We're at the Heinz Convention Center in Boston, Massachusetts. We're here for the WBA Middleweight Championship bout between Mike McCallum with the gold trim and Steve Collins in the white trim. I'm Dan Deardorff along with Alex Wallow and the beginning of this fight, the first six rounds belong to Mike McCallum, but a good resurgence here, Alex, by Steve Collins, although I scored the last round a draw. Yeah. I think that the last round both fighters needed a rest, and again, it just really depends upon who gets that strong second win first and is able, most importantly, to sustain it. Collins dug a deep hole in those first five rounds. I mean, if, if they split the remaining rounds, uh, four rounds, I think McCallum has to win the fight. So Stevie Collins has to really dominate here in the last third of the fight. There's a chance that some of the judges may have scored the fifth round, a 10-8 round. That would really hurt Collins. A 10-8 round in favor of McCallum. Both fighters trading punches, but they just don't appear to have a lot on them. But that McCallum flurry did score. Well, they scored, but they don't appear. Oh, there was a good left uppercut by Mike McCallum, who seems to be finding the range once again. Bernie Soto, the referee, Alex, letting these fighters exchange blows on the break sometimes. And McCallum working to the body and then up to the head. He distributes his punches very, very well. Would it be fair to assume that if both fighters tire badly, much better to be the fighter with the lead? Well, yeah, also, the question is, do you want to be the fighter with the young legs, or do you want to be the fighter, uh, you know, with the experience going the distance? One thing for Steve Collins, in his 16 fights, he has been 12 rounds twice. He was the United States Boxing Association champion. He won it at 12 and defended it once at 12, so that is not uh, uncharted waters for him. Got in two sharp punches. Nothing much coming back from Steve Collins. He's he's now tired, and McCallum seems to have a little bit of a jolt in energy right now. Where Collins is really running a risk. He's over swinging. Wide open. As we come into the final 10 seconds of the ninth round, this championship bout is scheduled for 12. We'll be right back to Boston. 33-year-old Mike McCallum, the champion, meets Steve Collins in the center of the ring, and away they go. Louis Spada working with Eddie Futch in Mike McCallum's corner, told Mike between rounds, this is going to be his last round. Meaning Collins. This is the 10th round of a fight scheduled for 12. Obviously, Steve Collins looked tired that last round. I didn't say anything to indicate that he was ready to go. That might have been wishful thinking on the part of McCallum's corner. Saw that good right counter by McCallum and scored. Double left jab, yeah. one to the body, one up to the head. Yeah, really, yeah, it really was. I mean, that really shows you the left hand of a veteran and a talented veteran. Belly jab and right up to the head with him. McCallum's punches obviously do not have the snap, uh, don't have a lot of power on him. He is tired. He is not obviously in the prime of his life, but he is a champion, and he's doing what's necessary right now to keep his title. There are the Petronelli brothers. That's Goody Petronelli in the forefront. Pat, Tony are all here. The famous Petronelli gym that the home of marvelous Marvin Hagler down the road in Brockton, Massachusetts. They are Steve Collins, trainers. And there you saw a real act of desperation by Stevie Collins. He just put both arms across him, his head and just walked in. I mean, all pretense of boxing is really out the window right now. Trying to move here, trying to get some bounce. Ordinarily, he'd push off that back foot and try to get the right-hand counter. There he tried to do it. McCallum had beat him to the punch and then gotten out of danger. 
Well, there was a right to the body, but it really wasn't that hard of a blow. It's almost like Collins spun himself around. Again, another reminder, George Foreman and Jerry Cooney coming up later on our program, plus Willie Shoemaker's last ride. So we've got a good fight, plus a great deal of sports still coming our way on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Steve Collins now bleeding from the nose as well as the left eye. Well, there was a left by McCallum scoring after a combination, and it hit right on the nose of Collins, and it appears to have hurt him a little bit. And Mike McCallum trying to make Louis spot his prediction come true. He's stepping it up again right now. Mike McCallum not afraid to throw punches even in the clinch. Look at him lice up with that right uppercut. Okay, that one missed, but he's been scoring with it. There you saw the McCallum legs tired, but I think if you're making a case, you could say that it's late in a pretty grueling fight, and that may not just be age, must, may just be fatigue. Steve Collins came to the United States in 1986 as part of an Irish amateur boxing team, decided to stay. He's an electrician by trade and can earn a living doing that, but he's earning bucks today by challenging for the WBA middleweight championship that's owned by the man on the left, Michael McCallum. And Alex, by this humble observer's standpoint, it's reached that magical stage where Steve Collins needs a, a knockout to win. Yeah, and you got a fighter who is not known as a puncher, doesn't possess the, the power. He would have to, to get a knockout, Mike McCallum would really have to totally run out of gas. And Steve Collins would have to find the energy to take advantage of it. And right now, McCallum doesn't look like a man who's about to run out of gas. Collins getting some good work in the midsection with a left and a right that scored. Mike McCallum also came here as an amateur, Dan, in 1977. He had gone to the 76 Olympics with the Jamaican national team, reached the quarterfinals, and met Clint Jackson, one of our outstanding amateurs from Nashville, Tennessee, came up here the next year. Uh, was a two-time national champion here in the American uh, amateur program, and really has based his boxing career out of the United States ever since. You heard the crowd react to a scoring combination to the body by Collins. But Mike McCallum fighting his 38th professional fight knows when it's time to be cautious. He knows when you don't make a mistake, and that's in the final rounds of a fight where you're leading. Mike McCallum has fought 250 or more amateur bouts. A real ring veteran. We're in the 11th round. And I guess, Alex, the question now is if this fight goes the distance at a pace like this, what does this hold in the future for Steve Collins? Well, as we said at the top of the show, this has to be a valuable learning experience for him. He's only had 16 pro fights. And, you know, he's shown that he can stand in there with a very talented fighter that does belong in the major leagues. He's not ready yet, if the fight continues that as it is, and it appears it will, he's not ready yet to win a world championship, but he does deserve his top 10 rating. And I think that uh, if he can continue to develop, there's every chance that he will be back. One of the problems, Dan, that we don't think about too much with all the divisions in boxing, one of the problems that presents is too many champions. And when you have too many champions, sometimes kids like Stevie Collins, only 16 pro fights, get rushed into fights that they're not ready for. Tough to pass up a world title chance. Closing seconds of the 11th round. We'll be back for the final round. There's one to go. We're going to keep it here. Right now, let's follow Steve Collins into his corner. Stevie, you knock out to win. That's him. Not damn right, Stevie. We can last off, round. Baby. Last round. Chief, try that left to the belly and right to the chin. Walk it. Left to the belly and right to the chin. The most you can do is miss. Right, right. Then move that. Yeah. Try the left and overhand right. The guy's this tied. This is the last up. round coming up. Yeah. I want you to shake hands. Okay. Good luck. All right, Stevie, you need a knockout. Okay? You need a knockout. The 
Fighters touch glove, and away they go here in the 12th and final round. You saw there in McCallum's corner in between rounds, Eddie Futch working on a cut over his eye. Right eye, you see McCallum pulling at it there, pulling again. Again, this will have to be a round of desperation for Steve Collins. Nothing short of a knockout is going to do him much good. Unofficially. Unless we're going to be witnessing some of the most amazing scorekeeping in boxing well, history, although it's been seen before. Unless you've got judges who score with their ears and not their eyes, which has happened before. McCallum again pulling at that right eye, staying away. Stevie Collins just isn't jumping on him the way he should. Mike McCallum, who yearns for attention, feels that he has been left in the shadows of people like Leonard and Hagler and Thomas Hearns, having first won a world title back in 1984, still has to sometimes have to answer the question, who's Mike McCallum? Well, He's the WBA World Middleweight Champion and doesn't show any signs of losing it here to Steve Collins. Oh, a good scoring combination by Collins. I think there are some middleweight contenders out there, Dan, who looking at this performance by Michael Collins say he has slipped somewhat. He's had more trouble with a 16 fight pro uh, than he should have. I mean, he's winning the fight, but I'm not so sure that if I were a, a hot young middleweight prospect, I wouldn't see some signs of hope there that perhaps finally at age 33, Mike McCallum is finally taking a step backward. No question that Steve Collins has pleased his fans here in Boston. Remember we said at the top of the show, Steve Collins said, well, on paper he's a better fighter than I am, but I have more determination. This fight turned out, he turned out to be a prophet. Mike McCallum does have more talent than he has, but he does have tremendous determination. A lot of people journeyed over here to the continent from Ireland over to the States, and they certainly got their money's worth. We're approaching 10 seconds left here in the 12th and final round. The crowd here, 90% of them on their feet. They appreciate good boxing. We will return here to Boston for the decision. And again, a reminder, we have George Foreman and Jerry Cooney from a couple weeks ago. So stay with us. We'll continue with ABC's Wide World of Sports. Well, the crowd waiting for the decision here at the Heinz Convention Center. Let's go upstairs now to ring announcer Alan Platt. Decision. The scoring is as follows. Judge Charles Williams scored the fight 117-111. Judge Nicasio Drake scores the fight 118-110. And Judge Lynn Carter scores the fight 117-111. For the winner and still world boxing association. Well, some of the crowd reacting. Uh, not real pleased by the fact that Mike McCallum was declared the winner, but Alex, I don't think there was much question about that. We'll be back with an interview of Mike McCallum later.